very excited about exploration and about space and about sharing it with, uh, with everyone. The smiles on their faces and the extreme joy, they were really happy to be doing what they were doing. And we're at T-minus nine minutes and counting. People thought that because the teacher would be on board that it might rejuvenate attention, but it did not. T-minus seven minutes and counting. There weren't that many members here of the press. Pilot Mike Smith has given an... The mission has already been postponed several times due to mechanical problems and bad weather. Throughout the morning, engineers expressed concern about the unusually low temperatures. At 11.38 a.m., Challenger is cleared for launch. Ground launch sequencer program has been initiated. I remember I looked in their eyes and I wished them well on the journey. T minus two minutes and 20 seconds. Krista's parents are at the Cape for the launch. Sound suppression system now armed. I've done a lot of launches on the top of the launch control roof out here, and I've seen families. They're worried, they're scared, they're in tears. That's not nice. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. We have main engine start. 4, 3, 2, 1, and liftoff. We heard ignition, we heard liftoff. I heard the uh, call throttle down. Everything was looking normal. I was watching the main engines. Roger, roll, Challenger. You're sitting there quietly rooting for them. You're sitting there quietly saying, go, Challenger, go, Challenger. Challenger now heading down range. Preparing to re-throttle the engines back up to 100%. It seemed to be just kind of crawling in space. The one for the Guinness Book of Records with the size flight crew Challenger, aboard. Go and throttle 3,305. to see sort of a flicker over on the TV. Flight GC, we've had uh, negative contact, lost family. Okay, all operators, watch your data carefully. And I looked over, and I saw this picture of this expanding fireball with uh, pieces moving in all directions. The crippled rocket boosters careen out of control. Especially declassified footage shows them being remotely destroyed. We have a report from the flight dynamics officer that the vehicle has exploded. We're working with the flight director confirms okay. that. Okay. We are uh, looking at uh, checking with the recovery forces to see uh, what can be done at this point. I knew instantly that none of them could possibly survive because we didn't have parachutes, we didn't have pressure suits. And at the altitude that they broke up at, there was no way they were going to maintain consciousness. It was immediately obvious to me that we had lost the entire crew. It didn't look normal. And I knew that from the amount of training that we had had and from the launch that we had seen uh, previous that Chris and I had witnessed. We are now looking at uh, all the... Very, very sad time. I felt horrible. It was a huge loss, and it always will be. I believe every uh, person in mission control came to grips with his demons that day. And uh, I think several of us said uh, a few prayers for the crew. And we also prayed for the, uh, the team in mission control, the team in launch control, and uh, those people who would have to live with the aftermath of this accident. Don't reconfigure your console. Make hard copies of all your displays. Make sure you protect any data source you have. 
I was vice president of the United States way back then. I went down there when, when Challenger blew up. It was a terrible tragedy, of course. So Reagan asked me to go down to comfort the families. It was a very moving thing for me uh, to see these families in grief. I think the thing that really moved me was President Reagan's uh, comments after that. We will never forget them, nor the last time we saw them this morning, as they prepared for their journey and waved goodbye and slipped the surly bonds of earth to touch the face of God. Thank you.